up, y'all? Today we're going to be going over the uh, Biden State of the Union, the uh, the incident that happened in that, and uh, yeah, you know, let's get it. And by the way, if you stumble across this video and you just and you like my analysis, I make content like this pretty much every day, uh, or at least I try to. But uh, if you want to hit the subscribe button, you know, hit the little, little red subscribe button down there. Give it a thumbs up, or you know, put the, the bell notification on the little ring bell thing. Turn that on; it'll be great. But all right, we're gonna get back to the video now. Peace. Israel has the right to go after Hamas. Hamas ended this conflict by releasing hostages, laying down arms. Could end it by by releasing the hostages, laying down arms, and sur surrendering those responsible for October 7th. But Israel has a ha <coughs> excuse me. Israel has a added burden because Hamas hides and operates among the civilian population like cowards under hospitals, daycare centers, and all the like. Israel also has a fundamental responsibility, though, to protect innocent civilians in Gaza. <clears throat> this war... Here's the thing, right? I don't see what anything wrong with, with what Biden said there. He's like, look, Israel, we understand that these people are hiding among civilian populations, but you have to do your best to protect the innocent people, right? Like the children, the kids, the people who are not involved, right? You have to do like your best to do that. Again, people will say like, that's a, oh, well, that's a, that's a copium remark. I, I don't like, if you take it at face value, I don't see where it is unless you want to try to apply different motives to it, but I don't see what's, uh. I don't see what's wrong with that statement, but we're going to keep watching it. Has taken a greater toll on innocent civilians than all previous wars in Gaza combined. More than 30,000 Palestinians have been killed, most of whom are not Hamas. Thousands and thousands of innocents, women and children, girls and boys, also orphaned. Nearly two million more Palestinians under bombardment or displacement. Homes destroyed, neighbors in rubble, cities in ruin, families without food, water, medicine. It's heartbreaking. I've been working nonstop to establish an immediate ceasefire that would last for six weeks to get all the prisoners released, all the hostages released, to get the hostages home and ease the intolerable and humanitarian crisis and build toward an enduring, a more something more enduring. The United States has been leading international. Here's the thing, right? Like, again, I, like, I don't, you know, I don't see an issue with what he's saying. It's like, hey, look, like, you can't, like, just bomb an entire occupied territory, right? But, at, but also at the same time, though, I mean, I would, I could easily make the argument that if is because it's basically international standing is Israel's committing genocide, right? Which I don't believe is entirely true. Right, like when you have rising birth rates, that that can't be a genocide. That just really can't, right? But I think an argument you can make was, hey Israel, if you absorb the occupied territories, right? Or you or you do a, I mean, sorry about that. You do a two-state solution where you have or a three-state solution where the Gaza Strip becomes like their own sovereign nation the west bank becomes their own sovereign nation israel takes 100 like you know like a o to 100 thing regarding like the al-aqsa mosque or the temple mount and then let's say they attack israel again i think israel would have full justification to be like we gave these people sovereignty we gave them their own state we gave them we stopped disputing territory for the Al-Aqsa Mosque and that entire region, that uh, contested region. And they still did another terrorist attack to us. I think you would have immediate justification just to carpet bomb the entire region, right? Because at that point, it's like you've put as much good faith as you could into that, and there's nothing more, right? Because at the end of the day, it's um, it's kind of like you're, you're you're letting them achieve their goal of the disputed parts, right? Like the international, you know, recognition of what is, you know, disputed territory, right? But again, you know, 
I, I think if you want to make a pro-Zionist argument, that's one you can make an argument for a two-state solution and then just go go that route. Granted, I'm not for that, but you know, I think Israel pretty much won the war after fighting off all the Arab nations twice. But let's get back into the video. A more something more enduring. The United States has been leading international efforts to get more humanitarian assistance to Gaza. Tonight, I'm directing the U.S. military to lead an emergency mission to establish a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the coast of Gaza that can receive large shipments carrying food, water, medicine, and temporary shelters. No U.S. boots will be on the ground. A temporary pier will enable a massive increase in the amount of humanitarian assistance getting into Gaza every day. And Israel must do its part. Israel must allow more aid into Gaza and ensure humanitarian workers aren't caught in the crossfire. And they're announcing they're going to they're going to call, have a crossing in northern Gaza. To the leadership of Israel, I say this: humanitarian assistance cannot be a secondary consideration or a bargaining chip. Protecting and saving innocent lives has to be a priority. As we look to the future, the only real solution to the situation is a two-state solution over time. <clears throat> and I say this, as a lifelong supporter of Israel, my entire career, no one has a stronger record with Israel than I do. I challenge any of you here. I'm the only American president to visit Israel in wartime. But there is no other path that guarantees Israel's security and democracy. <clears throat> yeah, so again, I think I think maybe that last part where like, you know, like there's no other way. Well there there is another way. If you do a one state solution, you just and uh you absorb all the uh all the uh Gaza Strip and you absorb the West Bank and make it all Israel. You know, and have it like a sixty forty. But at the at the end of the day, right, it's like you like you have to look at what's reasonable. I think it just be like, hey, look, we're gonna stop disputing the Temple Mount, giving them you know what is internationally recognized as disputed territory. Like I said, you know. But I I don't see a problem with that. You know, it, I just don't. Like I I know people are interpreting like, oh, he has to uh, go to the pro Gaza side. Well. I think he's doing a pretty good job of being like, hey, look, Israel, you can defend yourself, that's fine, but you cannot just, like, indiscriminately bomb civilians, like, that's just not gonna happen, right? But, you know, but, uh, yeah, you know, that's my analysis of it. Uh, if you want to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification, you know, I make videos like this every day, so, or at least try to, like I say, so, alright, though, peace.